Hi there, in this video we are going to talk about a new point in the consolidation of financial statements between the parent and the subsidiary. In the previous examples, I was trying to explain to you how to calculate the goodwill and the gain and how to record the goodwill is either as a one amount in goodwill account or distribute all the gain among all the accounts and the remaining balance will go to the goodwill. In this last video, I'm going to talk about some issues in the consolidation. And in this example, we need to calculate the additional paid in capital and retained earnings of a parent company. So in this exercise, you will see that the parent company has common stock, paid in capital, retained earnings, and the same thing for the subside. The parent company issued 60,000 share of its common stock, which has a par value $2 for all the outstanding common stock of the subsidiary, uh, sorry, the fair value $2, the par value for the parent and the company is $1. So what are the consolidated additional paid in capital and retained earnings? So now we need to make the calculation for this contribution of shares. First, we get the number of shares, 67,000, multiplied by $2, which is the fair value, we get 134. Those are issued by the parent company. The par value of the common stock for the parent company is $1, multiplied by the number of shares that issued, 67. So the amount that will go to the common stock, 67. What does it mean? It means the new common stock balance of the parent company will become 187,000, which is 120 plus 67. Now, the additional paid in capital from this transaction is gonna be 67 that will be added to the paid in capital here, 60, so the total additional paid in capital for the parent company is going to be 134. So what shall we do with the common stock or additional paid in capital and retain the earnings of the subsidiary? Ignore it. We don't use it in our calculation. And the retained earnings of the parent will remain unchanged. So we leave it as 347. Now let us move to the last example where we get here the full picture. And this is what you need to focus on when you do the assignment, because in this type of examples, we usually have the full set of the parent company accounts, the subsidiary company accounts at book value and the fair value of the subsidiary accounts. Now, in this example, we don't need to make the journal entry, but we need to make the consolidated financial statements that shows the parent company with the subsidiary company in one financial statement. So let us read the example. It says the parent company acquires the subsidiary outstanding stock by paying cash of 405,000 issuing shares of 10,700, the fair value of the shares $40 per share. And we know here that the par value of the share for the parent company is $20. And now we learned from the previous example, we ignore the common stock, the additional paid in capital and retained earnings of the subsidiary. So please cross them off. 210, 90, 299, we don't recognize them or even revenue and expenses. So the parent company paid legal and accounting fees, 22,900, this is an expense and common stock issuance of 11,600. So how do we make the consolidated financial statements? Number one, you need to make the acquisition journal, which is done by the parent company. And we have seen it in the previous examples like this one. 
you debit all the assets, credit liability, and additional paid in capital, which we have seen in exercise one. So we need to do the same. But here we have more accounts, which is fine. So first of all, we debit cash, receivables, inventory, land, building, franchise, all of them at the fair value. We get it from here. So all these accounts up to here, which is the assets, or including the fine, uh, franchise agreement, all of them will be debit at the fair value. Then the accounts payable, accrued expenses, long-term liability will be credit, and here they are the same. Accounts payable, accrued long-term liability of the subsidiary will be also here credit. Now, the parent company paid cash and issued the stock. So the cash was 405. The number of shares issued 10,700 times 40. This will give you the fair value. But we take this 40 and split it between 20 par value and 20 additional paid in capital. And we put them here. So the common stock will be 214 and the additional paid in capital 214 and the cash will be 420. Then we add all the debits, all the credits, the difference between them will be the goodwill. So we don't know the goodwill until we make the job. Now we need to make the consolidated balance sheet where we put here the inventory the parent, the subsidiary, and the total. But look here, it's 269,900, which is, uh, so yes, here it is, the fair value, the inventory fair value. So in this consolidation, I didn't put all the accounts, but I'm trying to show you a selection of the assets accounts. So you don't see cash or receivables here. We start by inventory. So we take the parent, the subsidiary fair value, we ignore the book value, and then we put the total. The same thing for land, building, franchise, and then accounts payable, accrued expense, long-term, and then for the common stock, we don't acknowledge the common stock paid in capital of subsidiary. We take it directly from the common stock here of the parent. So we get the common stock plus the issuance of the new common stock, which is 214. So when we add 214 common stock plus 660, we get 874. The same thing for additional paid in capital, we get 70 plus 214. But remember, we paid 11,600 for stock issuance. We subtracted from the additional paid in capital. So the additional paid in capital will be the parent company paid in capital plus the new amount minus the cost of issuing common stock. Then the next one, retained earnings. Again, we take the retained earnings here of the parent company, 430, and this would be the beginning. But how do we get the retained earnings of the ending? We get the beginning, the revenue and the expenses are only for the parent. So the beginning 430 plus revenue 100, 1,030,500, minus expenses, and then minus the, uh, the cost, sorry, the, the services, the legal and accounting fees, 22,900. And then we make it, I'm sorry, this one should be 967, not 989. So, oh, I'm sorry, no, no, this one we get 900 because here we add up the 22,900. We put it here. So we get the retained earnings 470,600. So the key point that you need to learn from this example is starting from here, like the equity side and the revenue and expenses of the subsidiary are not usually included in 
the consolidated financial statements. I hope you find this example useful. And in this chapter, I'm gonna give you 10 days to work on the exercises because it needs time to understand the consolidated financial statements. And if you need extra help, please let me know. Thank you, bye-bye.